Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our developing microservices with ASP.NET Core 6.0 with minimal API and in this video we'll be talking about seeding data with an entity framework. So in our last video we discussed how we can actually create an entity framework based model something like this and we also saw how we could be able to use the DB context to create the DB context for reading the data from the database using the entity framework and also we did the migrations and I mean the initial data migrations and we also created created like the employee tables and stuff. So those are all working fine, but every time the code actually initiates, it has to be seeded with some sort of data. And that we are going to be doing over here. I mean, we could be able to insert the data directly into the database, uh, but I'm just gonna show you another way which we can use in entity framework to seed the data in so that we can read the same using our microservice that we are gonna be developing. So in order to seed the data into the database, we are gonna actually create a new class and I'm gonna call this as uh, probably data seeder or something like that. And within this data seeder class, I'm actually gonna seed the data for our uh, uh, employee DB context, something like that. So I'm just going to create a constructor and I'm going to call the employee DB context, employee DB context, and then I'm going to uh, create and assign a field which we can use within our seed operation that we are going to be uh, doing over here. So first of all, we're going to just do this public wide seed. Uh, and over here, I'm going to just verify if employee DB context dot uh, employee that we have uh, of any, which means if there is nothing, only then you create the data into the database. So I'm just gonna say war employee, something like this is equal to new list of uh, employee. So I'm just gonna do that. So it's basically gonna be employees, which makes more sense. And then within this particular uh, var, I'm just gonna say new employee of the name, uh, something like uh, probably Karthik and citizenship is equal to India and uh, the ID or the employee ID is equal to one uh, and similarly I can create one more employee new employee so these data are going to be pretty much exactly the same sort of data that we were actually reading so i'm just going to change the name probably instead of prashant i'm going to use uh, jacob if you remember in our earlier videos we created the employee data pretty much like here like prashant and karthik so i'm going to be doing exactly the same thing i just want to change the data so that you will see the difference between both of them and the citizenship is going to be um is going to be from us uh, and the employee ID is going to be do something like that, which is all good. So that's the list of all the employees that we have got. And once we have this, we can then call the employee DB context dot employee dot add range. So I'm just going to do an add range here of the employee, you can see that the intelligence of Visual Studio 22 is quite interesting and intelligent enough to tell me whatever that I need to be doing. Uh, and employee uh, db context dot save changes. So that's it. So that's going to be the seeding of the data that we are looking for. So once we have the seed data method, we can then seed the data once the entity framework starts running. Or we can also tell, like, we do you want to seed the data? before we actually even launch the application if in, in different environments, something like that. So for doing that, I'm just gonna go back to the program.cs file, which is the place where I'm going to be using this uh, seed operation that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, and over here, I'm just gonna call the uh, builder.services.addTransient. So this is something which we need to add as a dependency injection for the data seeder that we are gonna be calling and within this I'm actually going to be telling all right so this is the data seeder I'm going to be working with and I'm also going to tell uh, to have a seeder uh, method to seed the data in uh, so this is something which I found interesting online uh, that if you want to run the seed method you can use the args method that you have got from this one 
the arcs a parameter that you have got where you can verify so if the length is equal to uh, zero and if the arcs of uh, zero dot to probably to lowercase uh, method is equal to seed uh, uh, data something like that not sure whatever that you want to call so if it is a seed data uh, then just do a uh, call a seed data something like that and just pass the app there and i will tell you what i really mean so we need to create this particular method over here so let's generate a method called a seed data probably the i host method as a parameter instead of the app here and then we actually need to call what is called as an i service scope factory so the i service scope factory is one which is responsible for setting the scope for the a service that we are going to be accessing in and this is something very important and probably mostly used during the seeding of data and stuff so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to call the scoped factory is equal to i'm going to say app dot services dot get service and within this get service i'm going to call the i scoped factory and this scoped factory now i can just do something like an usings of var scope is equal to scoped factory dot create scope so i can call this create scope method over here i can call the service is equal to scope dot service provider dot get service of the data seeder not the db context so data seeder something like this and then i'm going to say service dot seed method so once we have this this seed data method is what is going to be called over here for us and then we can uh, perform the operation and now you may be wondering what is this error with the app probably you need to cut this code and you need to paste this guy over here because this is what i really require so i once this is done it should be all right cool so this is the seed operation that we are going to be doing but now you might be wondering why is this program.cs file getting larger and larger uh, we could able to refactor this very easily we can cover this in upcoming videos of this series but as of now this is what is going to be the seed method so we can call the seed data on the command line uh, to make this thing happen so all we're going to do is we're going to open the uh, command prompt or the terminal over here and then i'm going to say dot net run of uh, seed data and if i hit enter you can see that it is currently gonna run the seed operation there we go and it also started our applications so if i just open our local host of 5000 over here so just launch the browser uh, so you can see that hello world I mean, there is not going to be a drastic change going to happen because we have not even called uh, our uh, data or the employee using the entity framework yet. Uh, so there is no point in actually executing it. But you will see that we have the seed data uh, ran without any problem. So now if I just go to the uh, employee table, so let's see if we have something. So it's, let's start from employee. And if I execute this and you will see that there is this Jacob and Karthik sitting in. I don't know why there is no one or two for the employee ID, um, but it should be there. Let's quickly see what's going wrong on that data seeder. Oh, see that it's empty. That's why. Oops. So I think that's the problem we have gone through. Um, so let's try deleting this data once again, because this is going to be a problem later on Thread from employee. Uh, and now let's try seeding the data once again. Run seeding operation. There we go. And if I go back to the database and if I just revert back to the select, 
and we can see that we have Karthik and Jacob over here. So now that everything is looking good so far, I mean, we could able to seed the data and we can also uh, see that uh, the data is coming up over there, which is cool. So now the final operation, which we have been waiting all these days to read the data right from the controller using the database, instead of just reading from the collection, we are gonna be using uh, what is called as the uh, DB context. So for doing this, I'm actually going to uncomment this particular code that we have over here like this. And I'm actually going to add one of the most new and even yet to release feature of the .NET Core 6.0, which is in preview state, which is you can add the DB context within the parameter over here, like from services and then you can add that particular context directly. So that's another change that you can do, which is like a shorthand version of how you can actually call that particular context. So I'm actually gonna do something like a from services. So this is another change which was just recently introduced where you can just call the DB context, something like this, and then you could able to uh, play around with that particular DB context like however you wanted to. But now it throws you an error like because the from services cannot be used because it says that the feature lambda attribute is currently in preview state. So this is another new feature to the lambda attributes in the .NET uh, 6.0 which is still in preview state. So if you just go back to your, uh, your project, you can just set uh, something like a lang version uh, as preview. So if you make this as a uh, preview state, which means you could now use that from service, something like this, and you can see that it works fine without any problem. But instead of returning the employee collection dot get employees, we are now going to be returning what is called as the DB context. So I'm just going to call the DB turn of the DB dot employee dot to list, something like this. So we could able to call that and let's get rid of this one and you can see that we can now get the list of all the employees within our microservice so this is one of the quests that we were about to do from our last video and now we're going to finally uh, do it over here so let's try to run this code and see how it actually works so if i just run the code we got some errors so let's see the two errors that we have got it looks like the process is being used by the another processor just because i am running the test uh, code over here let me stop this and rerun this again. For some reason, it has not stopped executing. Uh, so now it's been stopped. So now we can see that it's getting 5,000 over here. And now if I just put slash and all the employees that I have got, so now it's gonna read the data from the database and it's bringing up us like one Karthik India and two Jacob US over here, which is this one that we are seeing. So now our microservice is actually working fine without any problem. So this is how we could actually get all the employees in a super short code uh, then compared to the classical code that we were doing without having this Lambda attributes and with this new feature with ASP.NET Core 6.0. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you for watching this video. In our next video, we'll see how we can also do some more updates to this particular uh, employee app by adding even more update and uh, you know put uh, post something like that and then we'll make the score even more better and then we'll see how we could able to deploy this microservice using docker and stuff thank you